千里之行，始于足下。A journey of a thousand miles begins beneath the feet. We now gather in the Tao to travel the journey together. 好、right, so、，last time we also looked over this particular painting. This painting is a、uh, Fuxi. He was one of the ancient mythological slash legendary emperors. So last time we pointed out that his attire was primitive. He had no footwear.、Uh, his fingernails were not trimmed because he lived in primitive times. Uh, that is that is to say, roughly 5,000 years ago, prior to the to the beginning of、uh, Chinese civilization proper. So he was a tribal leader who had an intuitive grasp of patterns. The most important thing that I pointed out last time. Was the following? The bottom part of the painting had two elements of interest, and when we zoom into that, we see we see to the left the bagua, to the right a turtle. So last time we spent quite a bit of time here. The bagua, the eight trigrams, represented the progression, the binary progression, expansion of two, four, eight, etc. That was one of the patterns noticed by the ancient Chinese. But what about the turtle? What kind of pattern did he represent? Well, it was not apparent in this picture. Here, the turtle looks kind of dark, but there is another source. Where we can see it more clearly. So, aside from the bagua and the turtle, we had other sources. Here, this is、uh, Luo Shu. This is Book of the Luo River, and it has a clearer depiction of the turtle that climbed out of it. So, the ancient legend had it. That when this、uh, tribal leader saw the turtle climb out of Luohe, the river, he noticed that it had markings on the shell. So counting up the markings, it、uh, ended up being the, a three by three magic square. So we know, pretty much for sure, that. The three by three magic square was just one of the insights of the ancient sages. Might have been Fuxi, might might have been someone else、uh, during that time, but they create a they shape a story based on that about this、uh, turtle climbing out of the river with the markings on it to express that. Well, you see, this is embedded. This is part of nature, and this was a sign from the gods. But now we know it's just plain human insight. So if you were to depict the dots as numbers, you get the magic square that we see here, and you can match everything. You can match all the numbers that you see in the three by three matrix here to the back of the turtle. Probably the easiest one to see is the one right in the center. That's that's a、uh, Dot pattern of five dots. Hence, we get the number five here, and then the other ones all correspond to the different squares. So the pattern that was noted by the ancient Chinese five thousand years ago was that, first of all, out of nine squares, all the digits from one to nine are utilized. So a completeness in nature, nothing is wasted, and 
you can add them up horizontally, vertically, or diagonally, and they will all add up to 15, no matter which direction you go. This depicts a hidden balance, a balance that is not very obvious, but it's there nevertheless. And it reveals itself to someone who studies nature. So this was interesting. But when I talk about patterns in life itself, in existence and in reality, I always want to make sure that I mention patterns noted by people other than the ancient Chinese. So for instance, we also talked about ancient Greece, the golden ratio and the Fibonacci sequence uh, was written about by Italian mathematician uh, Fibonacci, named after him, uh, but it, it also appeared in ancient Hindu mathematics. So the point to be made here is that noticing patterns that are part of nature, part of existence, part of reality, that's what we do. This is the way of all humanity. So without getting too deeply into the different patterns, it's important to just talk about pattern recognition. We recognize patterns. Some of the patterns that we recognize are less obvious than others. So an example that I pointed out last time was the Mendelbrot set. Mendelbrot is a French mathematician, much more recent. He pioneered uh, fractals, fractal geometry, which became part of uh, the science of chaos. Fascinating subjects. And they have all the ideas explored and uncovered in those subject areas have contributed massively to human understanding. We now know that nature is fractal, essentially fractal, and that everywhere we look, whether it's the, the mountain range, the hillside, beaches, uh, trees, plants, no matter where we look, we see fractals everywhere. So when people figure this out, today, when we go to the movies, we see a lot of special effects that are computer generated. Sometimes what they generate is indistinguishable from reality. We can't tell that something is computer generated. Well, they achieve that realism by incorporating fractal algorithms in the software that generates those images. So next time you see a movie and if there are computer generated clouds, they will look like real clouds because they incorporate fractal geometry. Trees, the same. Human skin, same. Everything is fractal. So it's a pattern that's embedded in nature. Now, these are what we talked about last time, but I want to emphasize that patterns that come from mathematics are not the only patterns in life. There are plenty of other patterns that we can get into that we did not get into last time. So I want to talk about a life pattern that you personally experience. And I want to, uh, as we move ahead for today's presentation, I would like it to be a little more interactive as we have done before. Uh, that is to say, every now and then, I'm gonna be asking everyone to contemplate some questions. So you have to not just listen, but also engage your mind and think about some of these very important topics. Now, of course, I don't want to spend the entire time that we have together with a whole bunch of questions and then wait for the answer. I want to strike the right balance, the right balance between, between content, delivering content, and also and, and interaction. Interaction for, for you and me, for the whole group. Balance, after all, is central to the Tao. 
Now let's talk about life patterns. So the topic now is the hero's journey. This is a pattern that's repeated over and over again. It isn't mathematical in nature, but it's embedded into life. So patterns in the Tao aren't just about mathematics. There are all kinds of other patterns. The hero's journey is one of them. So what is it? Well, there's a, there are certain patterns that repeat themselves in legendary tales, tales of mythology, in the stories we tell one another, in the narratives overall. And these patterns all have a lot in common. They all go through predictable stages. There's always different parts when you get to that particular pattern within the overall pattern. So in 1949, author who's a professor of literature, Joseph Campbell wrote about narrative patterns in a book called Hero with a Thousand Faces. And these patterns are found in myths and legends over the world. What is the most interesting thing about it? From my perspective, from a sort of Tao perspective, is that these patterns are found even in isolated tribes of humanity who have never, who had never had contact with the outside world. So in other words, they came up with their own stories and, and mythology and legends, and they all follow these predictable patterns, but they had never seen other tales of mythology or, or legends. So they didn't know that it was a pattern they were supposed to follow. They just had it. So it appeared to be a pattern that is embedded, imprinted deeply in the consciousness, consciousness of all humanity. In other words, it's part of the Tao for, for us, for all of us. We resonate with this pattern without knowing it. We resonate with it strongly, powerfully. When we see it represented in entertainment, when we watch a movie, a television show, if we were to look at, look at it from the perspective of patterns, we would be able to, to, to figure out the parts. We will be able to name them. But most of the time, without realizing, we just enjoy the entertainment. Now, how does that apply to the Tao? How does that apply to you? So think of the name of this pattern, the hero's journey. First realization is that you're the hero. You're the hero of your own narrative. You know, sometimes people ask, uh, you know, Derek, how is it that you can get along with so many different kinds of people? Even people that others consider to be extremely difficult, somehow I can get along with them. Somehow I can respect them. You know, it doesn't mean that I let them walk all over me, quite the opposite, but I find something of value in them, whereas other people feel nothing but contempt. And what I tell them is that, well, I realize an important thing, and that is, as much as these individuals are disliked by others, I know that in their own minds, they are the central characters in their own narrative. They did not get up in the morning, look in the mirror and say, I'm going to be a bad person today. I'm going to be the villain today. No, no. They all get up in the morning, look at themselves in the mirror and say, Today, the hero goes forth. Now, of course, in many of the legends, many of the tales that we've had since the dawn of humanity, a lot of them have featured sort of a male protagonist. And that's only because since primitive times, it's been the human male that's gone out to explore, to test the waters, so to speak, to go through challenges, times have changed. 
it isn't just the male role anymore to to go to head out there into the great unknown. Today, it's both male and female, as it should be. This particular journey, so I want you to to first accept that you're the hero, regardless of who you are, where you come from, what your gender may be, you're the hero of your own narrative. That's number one. Number two, the journey that we're talking about here, the hero's journey, your journey, it's one of many journeys within the overall context of your life journey. So I think you can figure out what that means. in the complexity of human life, you're gonna go on quite a few journeys. Each journey is an exploration of something. So you go on many journeys and occasionally you've got some journeys that overlap. That is, you're working on multiple things at the same time. Now, each one of those explorations, each one of those journeys will follow a particular pattern. First, I'm going to show you a pictorial representation of that pattern. Then I'm going to bring it back to the DAO and talk about how it applies to the DAO. So this is a this is a commonly seen pictorial representation of the hero's journey. The hero's journey is a process that you go through that you go through in life. So a couple of things should jump out at you. So first of all, you are the figure at the top, the hiking figure. You hear the call to adventure, and then you go on this great journey, make a big circle, uh, and then eventually return to your starting point. So where you are, when you hear the call of, of adventure, the call to adventure is the known and the familiar. It's your world, it's the world where you are comfortable. Hearing the call to adventure means getting into the unknown. The unknown where you will be exploring things that you have not seen before, learn things that you did not know before. So that particular part of the journey is the, the trials, the challenges. So along the way, you encounter all the people who become your mentors or helpers. And as you go through, work your way through all the challenges, you eventually come to, and there are multiple terms in regards to this. Here you see abyss, death and rebirth, revelation, etc. Uh, other terms that are talked about in the study of the pattern would be things like um, confrontation against evil or dark night of the soul. We'll get to that in just a moment. As a result of that confrontation, you are transformed by the experience and eventually you make a return. So most of the hero's journey is in the world of the unknown. What's this got to do with the Tao? Well, I'm about to present to you the connection. So first, I'm going to reiterate the idea that this is something that you experience over and over again in your life. So it would be best for you to realize that it's happening and be able to recognize the patterns. That, I think, is just common sense. So now, let me give you an example. So hero's journey to the left, an example journey to the right. This may match what happened previously when you encountered Tao for the first time. So in the typical hero's journey, whether it's a, a myth, a legend, a movie, a television show, there's always the call to adventure. So this is when you know, Luke Skywalker is called upon to join the resistance against the evil empire. This is when uh, Indiana Jones hears about something interesting that he should, he should look into. So 
this is where uh, Neo hears about how the world is much more than he suspected that would turn out to be the Matrix. So the call to adventure is the call to get into the unknown, as you saw in the previous diagram. So in the example journey, the call to adventure, the call to explore, may be the first time you hear about the Tao. So the Tao beckons, you know, come along for a journey of discovery. Here's something that you don't really know about, but that can benefit you if you learn more about it. Spiritual cultivation. Now, in hero's journey, there's always an initial refusal of the call. So Lou Skywalker is going to say, uh, no, I got to help my uncle Owen in the, in the family farm. I, I can't. I can't join the resistance. I wish I could, but I just can't. And, you know, other heroes have other refusals. It all plays out in every tale. You know, oh, I, I can't do it. You know, you guys go ahead. It, it's, it's not for me. So in the example journey, it may be the initial dismissal. Oh, you know, those new age ideas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know all about that. It's nothing more than just, you know, common sense. And, you know, yeah, those gurus, those spiritual gurus, I, I don't want to have anything to do with them. So initially, you dismiss. Your attitude is to, is to di dismiss the whole thing outright. But then something happens. The pattern is that something occurs that motivates you to cross the threshold. So for Liu Skywalker, it was when his family farm was destroyed. The Imperial Stormtroopers came by and killed his uh, family. So now he had no choice but to join the resistance. So for other heroes, it manifests in different ways. For Neo, he swallowed the red pill to get into, to wake up from the illusion called the Matrix. So for you, there might have been something happening initially that motivated you to take another look. After your dismissal, nah, nah, that's not for me. That's too new age. I don't like those people. There might have been something that piqued your curiosity. Hmm, maybe I should get into it. I'll just uh, look at it a little bit to see if it's as beneficial as people say. Either way, you start getting into it. You've crossed the threshold. That's another part of the pattern. So the next part of the pattern is the road of trials. So the hero always goes on a road of trials where he has his initial adventures. He learns new things about himself. He gains capabilities. For you, in your cultivation of the Tao, you discover, wow, there is actually a lot that I have to unlearn. This stuff makes sense, but I'm hampered by the things that used to be dogmatic concepts in my mind without realizing it. I have to let them go. So the road of trials for the Tao cultivator is to unlearn the things that are no longer useful, that have become baggage, and you need to relinquish them. Along the way, the hero finds mentors and helpers. So everyone knows that we have, you know, Star Wars mentors like Yoda, Obi-Wan Kenobi. These are mentors to help Luke gain mastery of his Jedi skills. You've got, you've got C-3PO, R2-D2. These take the place of helpful animals in legendary tales to help the hero. For someone on a journey of Tao cultivation, you come across teachers and like-minded friends. So think about what we're doing right now. We're gathering together to learn about the patterns of the Tao. We are friends to one another. We are getting into this whole thing, this adventure together. So what part of the pattern is happening right now? At some point, the hero confronts the challenge. So the challenge 
in a movie about good versus evil is going to be the personification of evil. The, the hero will come up against it, you know, figure uh, thinking that, well, I've got mentors and helpers. You know, I've learned new things. I've gained my new skills. So I'm going to take you on. For the Dow Cultivator, it can be the one of the biggest challenges of all, and that's dealing with the ego. Well, the ego is not an easy adversary. It's monstrous. It's insidious. It's worse than any movie villains that we know. So confronting the challenge of dealing with the ego. So in the hero's journey, there's the dark night of the soul. That is what happens when you confront the challenge and you lose. In the Tao cultivation, you fail. You let, you let your arrogance get the best of you. You show that you still have a lot of work to do. There's the metaphorical death of the ego. When you realize that, well, I thought that I have learned a lot, but I have actually learned nothing at all. That's part of the pattern. It's okay. You're on the journey. It's part of the pattern that predictably will occur. So what is the most important thing is what happens right after that. What happens after the dark night of the soul is revelation and rebirth. That means like a phoenix rising from the ashes, you experience a spiritual rebirth. A spiritual renewal, if you will, where you realize that, well, not everything I learned has been in vain. There are good things that I can build on. And it starts right now. What happens after revelation and rebirth is just as important. That is the process in the pattern known as transform, transformation and the attainment of triumph. Transform and triumph. This means in Tao cultivation, after rising up from failing to deal with your ego, you finally master the lesson. So, you now, this is uh, toward the end of a movie, you now have done something. You have struck a blow against the evil empire, so to speak. And now the student becomes the teacher. Having attained that mastery, humbled by the experience, you now are in a position to mentor and help others. And so the cycle begins anew. You know, what a marvelous pattern that we're all in, in the middle of. We're all still in it right now. So let me show you that graphic again, just to make the point that having gone through that example on applying the hero's journey to Tao cultivation, you can probably see yourself going through some of this process. So again, patterns, patterns everywhere. We see the image of the patterns, and the more you become aware in the Tao, the more you see them everywhere, and the more clearly you perceive them. So that's it. That's all I want to say about seeing the image in the Tao. Our meeting has come to an end, but the journey continues on. Let us travel safely. Until next time, may the Tao fill you with peace and happiness.